What's up guys and welcome back. Have a pretty exciting video for you today. Spent a lot of time doing some research on this and what I wanted to really tell you guys. And during my research, I found that there's not a ton of information on this. When it comes to hiring a, a whitetail habitat professional, the only video I could even find on YouTube personally was uh, one that was made by habitat professional themselves. Uh, most of you may know or seen our surprise video a little while back on having Jeff Sturgis from Whitetail Habitat Solutions over to our farm, uh, which was a great experience and I will do another video uh, on that later. Um, I felt like there should be a video made for the consumer and people that are thinking about doing this, especially when they are spending so much money on the land, they want to do it right, they want to hire someone uh, to help them set up the habitat uh, on the property that, you know, someone should really be talking about it and laying out um, some ideas for that. So I have six tips for you today. And the first one is going to be doing your research on the different professionals. I found it interesting and, and most of you probably know guys like Jeff and, and a few others are, are quite expensive, you know, thousands of dollars. They're not cheap. And the longer you're participating in and doing these types of things, food plots, habitat management, etc., you run into people that try and make small niches uh, along the way, even as little side businesses and things like that. I know I had spoken with someone who was, I think, selling seed out of a small business, but then they also would offer, you know, habitat plans, etc. And that's great, and I'm I'm all for it. But I think experience plays a huge, huge role in, um, you know, who you should hire. Uh, when you have someone that's, you know, visiting over a hundred properties a year, I think that that means a lot. And um, you know, every property is laid out different. So <clears throat> if you're gonna pay. 300 or 500 bucks versus a couple thousand. Yes, that is a huge difference in money. But at the same time, I think that uh, that experience does mean a lot. And if you do make some mistakes or maybe they're just not a good experience and you need to backtrack, that could take years and years and years and it could really mess things up. So do your research. I think if you do that, uh, you will come up with the same few names probably in the industry that make the majority of their living actually doing that, uh, which is extremely impressive. So props to them. Uh, the second tip I have is studying their material, the person you're going to hire. So for me, that was Jeff. I watched probably almost all of Jeff's videos. Um, I mean, hours and hours. My wife would be asleep. I'd be sitting there just before I go to bed watching more of his YouTube, learning his uh, strategies, etc. And that means a lot because if you're going to bring someone onto the property, you're going to pay, you're going to be limited to one day with them, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on the size of the property you need to know what they're practicing. If, if they start bringing up things that you just never heard of in their videos and have no idea, that's gonna be a waste of time um, from you studying the plan with them, asking questions that you should really already know. So you have to spend the time studying their material, know what they're using. In addition, they might be using things that you have no access to. Maybe all of their stuff is, is um, uh, with using a large tractor and you don't have a large tractor, that's gonna be a problem. For Jeff, I knew he utilized an ATV, a cultipacker, and a sprayer and did pretty much the majority of everything with that, uh, you know, even with decent sized properties. And I was like, okay, that's something I can do that's similarly aligned um, with what my resources are. So that's very important as well. Um, the third tip is, is practicing. And when I say practice, I mean practicing some of those techniques and strategies that they're using. Um, for example, if you saw my uh, beginner food plot mistakes video, I went over some of the mistakes that I made, one of them such as using too much simazine uh, for the switchgrass that I planted. And if I wouldn't have made those mistakes or had that practice, and I went into this coming year, 2021, frost eating, etc., and using herbicides, um, I would have wasted a huge amount of money uh, and time messing it up on a larger scale, and that would have been devastating. Um, so I am super glad I got that practice, even if it was just one season in the spring of practice, uh, you know, using the herbicides and the equipment and all that good stuff. Uh, it was very, very important. So if you have a relative or a friend, and maybe you even offer to do, um, you know, a small food plot, uh, they help you purchase some stuff and you do it for free just for the experience. Um, it would be well worth it before you dive in and spend the money and do things on a larger scale. 
The fourth tip I have is schedule early. And uh, I don't mean earlier in the season, but I mean early as in when you purchase the property as early as possible. Uh, because again, you make even a couple of mistakes or you cut some trees down you didn't want to cut, you remove some pines that would have been good cover or, or block from the, from the wind for the deer, etc. Uh, you, besides planting and spending a lot more time and money fixing it, you don't want to backtrack like that. So the earlier you can get scheduled, we had only owned the property, I don't know, six or seven months before we got Jeff on there. And I remember talking to Diane about it, his wife stating, you know, should we wait for the following year? Should we get him on? And we grabbed one of the last spots for Michigan. Uh, we got him over there and now I went through some of my mistakes and some of my practice and I'm gonna be able to revamp everything for 2021 on the plan that Jeff gave us without backtracking much, if at all. Um, so very happy with that and I think you should consider that or, you know, as a lot of us do when we look to purchase that next property, have that in mind and, and getting someone out there that they, that they trust and want to uh, put a plan together for them. Uh, the fifth, tip I have for you is having questions ready. I know I started to touch on it briefly, but if you don't know their techniques and their strategies and what you want to ask them, maybe the things that you know least about, um, if you're not ready or maybe have those questions written down, you are going to uh, be very disappointed when that day starts to end and whoever, Jeff, whoever needs to leave and you didn't get your questions answered, you didn't have them written down, you just thought of five more questions at night uh, while they're gone. It will be a, uh, a struggle often, and it act, this actually rolls into my, my sixth tip, which is discussing a follow-up and what's included. But if you don't have those questions ready, if they're busy, which they probably are because they make their living doing this and traveling and, and probably uh, some other things as well, you're, you might have a hard time following up with them and getting those questions answered. So it's very important to know their strategies and, and be able to ask questions on the plan that they're putting together and not the food plot itself or how to uh, use simazine or what that is, what's the difference between a pre-emergent and a post-emergent herbicide and things like that. You should already know those um, because your questions should be on the plan and the differences that you were doing and should do in the future in accordance with the plan instead of those simple techniques that you should already know. Now that doesn't mean you, you can't have any questions around that or maybe there's just something bothering you that you wanna clarify, that's great but have it written down. I almost felt like at one point I was just shooting off questions to Jeff, um, you know, and I almost felt a little bad, but it was, it was well worth it. Jeff understood and he, he knew, I believe, that I understood his techniques because I was able to ask those questions and keep moving. If I didn't, it would have been drawn out. He probably would have been thinking in his head, well, why didn't this guy watch some of my videos to, to know some of this? It was just a waste of time. Um, and because I did that, we were able to have a great day um, talking about uh, each other's families, getting to know each other, walk the property, talk about the plan he put together, and then I was able to ask some of the questions that I had developed in my head. Um, so have those written down, be prepared as much as possible, and then that sixth tip, you know, typically you put a deposit down, which was more than happy to do, but for that, when you start uh, putting the deposit down, going over price, I think that one downfall with many managers is having something set for what is included and what you pay for. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you're really going to get a coded, color coded, um, you know, strategy map of your property, which is great. But that's it. There's no written rules and extra, uh, you know, characteristics or, or whatever outline. Um, for for the strategy, I I did put one together my own, and actually um, I don't have it uh, with me, but. At the end of the day, when I was uh, done with Jeff, I wrote out a page and a half of notes and broke everything down and everything I wanted to remember. I have it on my phone, I have it on paper, um, because I didn't want to lose that train of thought, you know, when it comes to the spring and all the way to the next fall in 2021. Um, but I think it would be smart. I think it would be smart for habitat professionals to have a little bit more of a, of a what's included in an outline and maybe there's some materials that they give and a listed uh, follow-up schedule. Again, if they're that, that busy, they're probably good at what they do, which is great. But if you absolutely cannot get in hold of, of, of the manager that you paid thousands of dollars to come, um, you're going to be a little bit disappointed probably. And by all means, they can't be, you know, over a hundred clients a year times, however many years, 10 years, they can't just be taking calls left and right. They have their own properties, their own family, you know, stuff to deal with. 
Um, so I completely respect that. And that's why you should minimize the follow-up and the questions that you have. But at the same time, know that you can get one, two, three, whatever it's going to be, short consults for follow-up questions and you can write them down and ask them later and get a hold of them with a number or by email. Make sure that that is laid out, um, which is just super important. You don't wanna leave the day feeling like you had a good time that day, but then they just absolutely left you hanging. You'll be a little bit heartbroken with that, I think. So um, again, with Jeff, we did have a great experience. If I was going to be uh, a little bit of a, of a uh, super critical person, I would say, you know, the follow up is something that Jeff will probably uh, work on maybe a little bit in the future. My advice would be uh, for him, for his clients. Um, but I will say that when I did have a couple of questions, I kept it short and sweet. And after a certain amount of time, Jeff did get back with me and I was very appreciative of that. So, you know, kudos to him. And I'm sure hopefully sometime in the future, I'll be able to touch base or at least just say hello uh, because he's such a great guy and he does so much for us. And, um, you know, maybe have a couple other follow up questions because I'm super excited for 2021, the changes we're going to be making and uh, to bring to you guys every year, you know, the differences that we're seeing. So I'll have a video specifically on what Jeff told us and, uh, you know, point out exactly what I think that's doing to the habitat and why I think it's going to help the deer herd and my hunting and my family's hunting. Um, so I'll bring that to you soon. If you guys enjoy things like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you next time.